Hello and welcome back to question 3 part 2. Now in 3 part 2, it says that hey, there is such a value of a such that f square is equal to f inverse no matter the value of x. Yeah, so no matter what values of x you put inside, as long as you don't put those values that will destroy the machine, yeah, as long as you don't put these values, f square is actually equal to f inverse if you choose the right value of a. So I gone ahead and let f square equals to f inverse and we have to solve for a. Now some of you might see the problem with this. When I did this for the first time, I spent quite a lot of time, like five minutes trying to solve this, then I realized that, hey, it's just not solvable, right? That is because we actually have an equation with two unknowns, right? 99.99% of the time, you can't solve this, right? There are some trivial solutions, but over here, you just can't solve it this way. So what we can do is actually um, try to make the right-hand side look like the left-hand side. We kind of have like a fraction over here, a fraction over here. You can see like 2a minus ax. If I make this combined together, maybe I can get something similar and then we can try and see from there. Huh? So this is 2x minus a over x, which is actually quite similar to 2a minus ax. Huh? But maybe, you know what, I'm going to multiply by a negative 2 to make this denominator negative 2x because I need a negative 2x to sort of appear as well. So multiplying by a negative 2, I get a 2a minus 4x over negative 2x. Okay, and then if we compare with the left hand side, ha, ah, we start to see that hey, this is 2a minus ax. This is 2a minus 4x. So a could possibly be 4. Let's check the denominator. If a is 4, this thing at the bottom is just negative 2x, which is what I have here. So by observation, a is equal to 4. Right? By observation, duh, 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 a equals to 4. And that is the answer for part 2. Now, uh, in part 3, it says that, hey, so when a is equal to 4, can you find out, sorry, let me just very quickly use my pointer, right? Then a equals to 4, can you find out what is f of 2, 0, 2, 1 of x? So what's f 2, 0, 2, 1 of x? It means that you have f, the first machine f, that goes straight into the next f, into the next f, into the next f, 2,021 f's all together, right? How do we actually do that? Ha, huh, we actually have to make use of something that we learned earlier on, which is this, f square equals to f inverse. Let me show you what's going on. So if I have an f square, right, uh, f into a f, let me just put one more. This is equivalent to f inverse. Now, why is this useful? Because if I put one more over here, then this three machines is as good as doing nothing. You get x. What does that mean? It means that if I put in the first input here, x, right, then the last one, then the output of uh, these three machines is exactly x. It means that when three f's are combined together, it's as good as doing nothing at all. Right? So we want to find out in 2021, how many groups of three are there? How many sets of three are there? Okay? So what you can do is take 2, 0, 2, 1, and we divide by 3. Okay? And I've already done that on the calculator over here. That is equals to 6, 7, 3, and 2 thirds which means remainder 2. Okay, let me put that away. So what that means is that I will have 673 groups of this, of doing nothing at all, right? That's excellent. And what I have left is just two more Fs. Then I can say that F of, oh sorry, F2021 of X is actually the same as this. It's congruent to F square of X, right? Because there's just 673 groups of machine doing absolutely nothing. Right, that serves no purpose, right? In uh, the overview, right? And I know f square is just f inverse. And f inverse is two minus a over x, and we must use the value of a, which uh, is four, or else this will not work. And this is f of two zero two one of x, two minus four over x. So that is question three, part two, and part three. I hope you found this useful and I'll see you in question four.